day, if you think about emissions, roughly we release a gram of CO2 for every gram of food we make. So that one-to-one -one relationship is really devastating for the planet. And we're trying to drive that down. This looks like you could offset between half to all of the CO2 emissions associated with growing that crop. Welcome to The Switch. I'm Elena Casas. Genetic modification of food crops isn't new, but it has typically focused on traits like disease resistance and higher yields. Scientists are now aiming to gene edit plants to directly fight the climate crisis by sucking more carbon from the air. If you think about agriculture, it's happening on half of the Earth's habitable surface. It's a huge potential sink for carbon, and that's what we're trying to do. So the way we do that is to look at how plants can capture carbon in a way that's not going to compete with yield. So we definitely don't want to give farmers a trade-off between farming carbon and farming food. We want them doing both. Step one was to improve photosynthesis so we get more yield. Step two now, and that's what these plants are doing behind me, is to have an additional carbon fixation pathway to get carbon trapped by the plants and put below ground into the soil for long-term sequestration. Scientists have identified useful traits in other plants, many of which depend on genes that already exist in the complex genomes of wheat and soya, but are dormant there. Gene editing aims to switch them back on. What traits do you need to encourage in the plants so that they sequester more carbon? The roots are fantastic because they are evolved to do exactly this, to be a, max, a massive interface with the environment. So if you think about the surface area of the root network, it's actually the biggest managed interface we have with the natural world. So if we can be doing our chemistry on that root surface to be taking carbon and converting it into other forms, that's where we're doing a, a reaction on the surface of the roots to draw CO2 out of the air and convert it into an inorganic form that stays below ground. The team are testing the soil around their gene-edited seedlings for carbon concentration. The more it's been captured, the more quickly the sample will turn yellow. We're still figuring out exactly how that's going to scale in the real world. Um, in the pots behind me here, um, typically there's about a gram of carbon being left in this very small amount of soil. When you start extrapolating that out, you're talking about megaton range CO2 sequestration for single crops like soybean. Um, today, if you think about emissions, roughly we release a gram of CO2 for every gram of food we make. This looks like you could offset between half to all of the CO2 emissions associated with growing that crop. So we're into the category of thinking about net zero farming here. What works in controlled conditions, though, may not outside in a field where these carbon removing soya varieties will have their first test planting later this year in Argentina. So you can see, so this is wheat. Um, and these have been in this chamber now for a couple of months, give or take. And what you're seeing here is uh, calli. So these are essentially plant stem cells. Um, and you can see you've got green shoots coming through now on most of these. And that's great, that's what we want. So these are baby wheat plants. Wild Bio has already conducted field tests of crops designed to increase yields through more efficient photosynthesis and discovered the biggest challenge is the changing climate itself. Our very first trial was very illustrative. Um, this was last year in the UK about an hour from here. And the beginning of the season was so wet, we couldn't even get a tractor on the field. And then within a month of getting the seed in the ground, it was so dry, we had to put in irrigation. So you have the too little and too much water problem happening in a very short order of time. Environmental groups, including Friends of the Earth and the Soil Association, have argued that carbon capture is a distraction from encouraging farmers to use techniques that are already tried and tested, like planting more trees. What do you make of that? I think the reality is today we need to limit the extent to which we're increasing the problem. We need to stop emitting so much. We're still going to have a huge bank of carbon in the atmosphere and that's going to continue to drive warming for many years after we stop adding to it. So we need to stop adding to that mess, but we also need to start thinking about how we're going to shift that and move it back to previous levels of CO2.